Hello everyone, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, back again for another video. This time I'm doing it on Cambridge Lower Secondary Checkpoint for Mathematics Paper 1, October 2023. You're not allowed to use a calculator because it's Paper 1, so let's start. Question 1. The area of the cross-section of a prism is 10 cm squared. The length of the prism is 4 cm. Calculate the volume. That's simply equal to the area of the cross-section times the length. 10 times 4, 40 cm squared. That's the answer. Sorry, it's 40 centimeters cubed, not squared, but yeah, that's the answer. Question two, draw a ring around the scatter graph that shows the positive correlation. Positive correlation means when one value or the x value increases, the y value also increases. And we can see that this is only viewed in this line here. This is negative correlation. This is no correlation. This is also no correlation since they're scattered. So this is the answer. If you think about it, you can also say that the positive correlation shows that it has a positive gradient. If we drew it on a line graph, we can see that it's going from bottom left to top right, which means it has positive gradient. That's the answer. Question 3. Write each of these expressions in the correct column in the table. What has been done for you? Equivalent to a natural number and not equivalent to a natural number. 4 cubed is 64, which is a natural number. It has to be greater than 0 and it's an integer, then it's a natural number minus 2 cubed, minus 8. It's less than 0, so it's not a natural number. Cube root of minus 8, that's just minus 2. Also less than 0, so it's not a natural number. Minus 5 the whole squared. If you think about it, minus 5 times minus 5. Negative and negative become positive, so it's 25. And that's a natural number. And hold up, this is not the answer yet. Do you notice one thing which I've done wrong in this? Yeah, that's right. right. It's simply because you can't just write the final answer of the calculation. All these minus 8, minus 2, 25 are the final answer of the calculations given. But we need to write the exact expressions in the table, otherwise we won't get the one mark. So instead of writing 25 minus 8 minus 2, we have to write minus 5 the whole squared. And then minus 2 the whole cubed. Cube root of minus 8. Like that. That's the answer. Question 4. Complete each statement using one of these symbols. One has been done for you. 20 divided by 1 and a half. It's less than 20. 20 times 3 by 4. 3 by 4 is less than 1. So 20 times a number that's less than 1 is obviously going to be less than 20, right? Even without calculating it. And if you calculated it, that's just 15. 15 is less than 20. So of course, that's the symbol. 20 times 2, 1 by 5. If you calculated it, then you'd actually get 44, which is greater than 20. But even without calculating, you can see that 2, 1 by 5, or 11 by 5, is going to be greater than 1. Therefore, when you multiply both sides by 20, this is greater. So we have the greater than symbol. 20 divided by 1 by 5. This is the same thing as 20 times 5 if we flip the fraction. And this is 100, which is obviously greater than 20, right? So we can write the greater than symbol. Even without calculating, we can see that 20 divided by 1 by 5, that's 20 times 5. This 5 is greater than 1, so multiplying 20 to both sides, we will obviously get this side larger. Question 5, 36 by t equals 4, solve it. So 36 is equal to 4t when we bring t to the other side, and t is equal to 36 by 4 which is 9. That's the answer. Question 6. Calculate 1 minus 9 by 8 minus 1 by 2 whole parenthesis. So we have to calculate the one inside the parenthesis first. That's 1 minus 9 by 8 minus 4 by 8 to do the calculation in the parenthesis. That's 1 minus 5 by 8, which is simply 3 by 8. That's the answer. Question 7. Draw a ring around the statement that is true. 3 less than root 7 less than 4. This is wrong. Since 3 is the square root of 9, 4 is the square root of 16. Square root of 11 is less than square root of 9, but they're writing that it's greater than, and therefore this is wrong. 4 less than root 18 less than 5. 4 is root 16. 5 is root 25. 18 is in between 16 and 25. So when you square root all three, it'll still be the same. So this is the correct option. If you look at the other two options as well, 
you can see that the root 36 is equal to 6. So it's not less than 6. It's equal to. And 6 is equal to root 36. 7 equals root 49. 50 is greater than 49. So square root of 50 is going to be greater than square root of 49. But then they've given it the other way. They're given less than. So this is wrong. This is the answer. Question 8. Jamila works out an estimate of 104.37 times 0 0.615. Her estimate is 100 times 1 equals 100. Complete the statement to show how to work out a better estimate of 104.37 times 0 0.615. Well, estimating 104.37 to 100 is a difference of 4.37 from the original number. Instead of making it 4.37, you can just round the nearest whole number to make the difference very small, 0 0.37. So you can write approximately 104 times, instead of rounding this all the way up to the wholest number, we can just round it to one decimal place. That'll make it much less difference, 104 times 0 0.6. And if we do this, you'll get 62.4. That's the answer. Let's go to question 9. A team can either win, lose, or draw a game of softball. The probability that the team will win or lose a game is shown on the table. Complete the table. So there's only win, lose, or draw. There's only three options. They have to add up to one. That's the definition of probability. If these are the only options or the only outcomes in a total, this total will be one. So, draw will be 1 minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4, which is 0 0.1. If you check, these three do add up to 1, this is correct. Question 10. Each diagram shows a pair of angles on parallel lines. Complete the table to show if each diagram shows a pair of corresponding angles or not. A is already done for you. That's not corresponding angles, since these two are actually called allied angles. They both are not equal, they add up to 180 degrees. These two are corresponding angles though, but that's not given. Diagram B. These two are actually equal, but then they are not corresponding angles. They are another type called alternate angles. So we can write B over here. For C, these are finally those which have become corresponding angles. Since if you think about the shape, it looks like an F. This is how the shape of corresponding angles should be. Inside an F, these two are parallel, there's a transversal going through. These two angles, they correspond to each other and are equal. So C is in corresponding angles. In a similar way, D is also there. If you look at the diagram, make the F this angle, and of course we can extend it up here, this angle. They both are going to be equal. They correspond to each other. That's why they're called corresponding angles. Question 11. A. Write 7 million in standard form. 7 million is simply 7 times a million. And this million can be written as 10 to the power of 6, since it's 6 zeros, right? Therefore, 7 times 10 to the power of 6 is going to be a standard form. Since 7 is between 1 and 10, this x value has to be between 1 and 10, inclusive of 1, exclusive of 10. So, I said x, it means this number, and times 10 to the power of y. y can be anything, but x has to be a number between 1 and 10. That's the answer. B, write these numbers in order of size, starting with the smallest. The smallest is going to be the one which has the least power of 10. So 6.4 times 10 to the power 1 and 5.5 times 10 to the power minus 1 both have 10 to the power minus 1 in them. Which one is smaller? Of course, now we compare the number themselves. 5.5 is less than 6.4. So of course, 5.5 times 10 to the minus 1 is the smallest. Next comes 6.4 times 10 to the power minus 1. The largest is 5.5 times 10 to the power 4. Since it's multiplied by a positive power of 10 rather than negative. That's the answer. Question 12. Five quadrilaterals are shown on the grid. Quadrilateral P is transformed by reflection followed by translation. Draw a ring around an unshared quadrilateral that is not a possible image of quadrilateral P. Well, how do we know which one is not possible? Well, 
we can see that 1, 2, 3. These three quadrilaterals are the same size as P. They have just been placed differently. Well, but then this one is not the same in terms of size. We can see that the base is three units in this one, but in quadrilateral P, it's only two. The above line or the above side is two units. It's only one here. And these two are the same, but then this is not everything same. It's only two of them are same, two are completely different. So this is the one which cannot be the image of quadrilateral P. Notice they've only said reflection and translation. There's no enlargement in it. With an enlargement, there could be a size change, but now there's no enlargement. Therefore, this is the answer. Let's go to question 13. Question 13, A. Tick to show each fraction that's equivalent to a recurring decimal, one by six. If you did long division and kept dividing, you'd actually get 0 0.1666, so on. And this is recurring. 6 by 8. This is equivalent to 3 by 4, which is 0 0.75. It terminates, so it's not recurring. 4 by 12. Same thing as 1 by 3, which if you kept dividing using long division, you would notice that it forms a pattern. 0 0.3333, so on. It does not stop. Therefore, this is also recurring. B. N is an integer where 0 less than N less than 15. N by 15 is equivalent to a terminating decimal. Drawing around the number of possible values of n. So n can be between 0 and 15, but not 0 and not 15. So if it has to be equal to terminating decimal, notice that 15 is equal to 3 times 5. And 1 by 5 is terminating, but 1 by 3 is recurring. So we need to get rid of the 3 in the denominator. And for that, we need a numerator which is a multiple of 3. So n can be 3, 6, 9, or 12, and these will all make it terminating decimal. Four possible values. Question 14. The table shows some powers of 7 and their final digit. A. The final digit of 7 to the power n is 1. Write down the possible value of n if n is greater than 7. Well, for powers of 7, there's a pattern. 7 power 1 ends in 7. 7 power 2 ends in 9. 7 power 3 ends in 3. 7 power 4 ends in 1, and it repeats. So the next power of 7, which is going to end in 1, it comes every 4 powers. So 7 to the power 4, next is 7 to the power 8. And a possible value of n is going to be 8. Also notice that n has to be greater than 7, so 8 is greater than 7, so this is valid. B, use patterns in the table to find the final digit of 7 to the power 22. We can see that 7 to the power 2 ends in 9, 7 to the power 6 ends in 9, and so on for all numbers which are 2 above a multiple of 4. And 22 is also 2 above a multiple of 4. 20 equals 4 times 5. So 22 equals 4 times 5 plus 2. 2 above a multiple of 4. Therefore, it shows that the final digit is going to be 9. Question 15. Calculate 6 times minus 1.8 by minus 0 0.2. We can rewrite this like this. And we will get cancelling this. And then 1.8 by 0 0.2 is 9. So 6 times 9, which is 54. How did I get this equals 9? We can just multiply both sides by 10. 18 divided by 2. That's 9. That's obvious. Therefore, we get 54 here. 